Good day everyone, this is Jason Santos and for today we will continue discussing statistics and probability now on chapter 2, part 1, measures of location. Let's get started. <music> measures of location is a large topic by itself. That's why we are cutting this discussion in two parts. The first one would be uh, concentrating on percentiles since maximum and minimum are very simple concepts in uh, central uh, measures of location um, I have decided to proceed to the first one which is percentiles then we will cover deciles and quantiles on the next uh, video so what is percentile it is a measure that pinpoints a location that divides the distribution into 100 equal parts. It is usually re represented by a letter P, which pertains to percentile. What we can see here is that there's a subscript J, but it's not a constant. I can replace that with any letter. It could be N, it could be X, it could be Y, A, so on and so forth. That value separates the bottom um, percentile of the distribution from the top 100%. Now, let's say, for example, the 20th percentile is the value or score below which 20% of the observations may be found. Equivalently, 80% of the observations are found above the 20th percentile of 80 now, in order for us to better um, understand the given, or what we have mentioned earlier, um, if you are, let's say there are 20 people and you are the fourth tallest person, you were told that, hey, you are the fourth tallest in this group of 20. What that means is that 80% of the people are shorter than you if you belong in the 20th percentile the four of you who belong in the 20th percentile. So, if your height is 6 feet or 1.85 meters, you are at the 80th percentile in the group. Alright? Um, and then at the same time, 20th percentile in the sense that you, are, uh, you belong to the group of the tallest um, people in that particular group. Okay, so here, how do we compute for percentile, right? Um, first, the step one is we have to, uh, the fir uh, for the first step, we have to arrange the data values in an ascending order of magnitude. Meaning, just like what we have uh, covered in the last chapter, we have to arrange it in a in an ascending order or in a particular order next or step number two you will have to find the location of percentile in the range list by computing l we used l because l pertains to location is equals to again le the letter j there means p for percentile j over 100 multiplied by the total number all right so later on, I'll show you an example in order for you to better understand this. And then for step 3, if L is a whole number, then percentile is the mean or average of the values in the L, location 1, plus 1 position. Now, if L is not a whole number, then percentile is the value of the next higher position. In order for you to better understand this, I'll give you an example. So here, I have um, a table, all right? And uh, in this given, the table is already in an ascending order or it's presented in an ascending order. Um, the, on the first column, you have the scores in a long test, one out of uh, one to 50 items, and then on the second column, you have the number of students, meaning how many people have had this kind uh, or this score, okay? And then finally, on the last column, 
you have the less cumulative frequency. So, applying what we have learned earlier, it says that you have to first, number one, arrange it in an ascending order. And then what you can see is that it's already arranged. So, step one is already done. For step two, we will now apply the formula we have learned earlier. What is that? L is equals to percentile over 100 times number. In our case, L is equals to 30. Why 30? Because the problem is to find the 30th percentile. That's why we have placed 30. Over 100, constant, times 150. Why 150? Because you have 150 people who took the exam. Okay? And then the location or the answer is equals to 45. Now, step 3, we take the average of the 45th and 46th observations which are both equal to 25. Uh, now first, let me go back uh, slightly. How did we come up with the less cumulative frequency table? So what we did is that we copied 4. We moved it to the right. 4 plus 5 is equals to 9. 9 plus 5 is equals to 14. 14 plus 15 is 29. 29 plus 19 is 48. 48 plus 22 is 70. 70 plus 18 is 88, and then so on and so forth. And then 141 plus 9 is equals to 150. So, when you have the right answer at the bottom of your less cumulative frequency, what that means is that you have tabulated the data correctly. Otherwise, if it's wrong, there's something wrong with how you entered the numbers in your table. Okay? So, Going back, um, we have our answer as 45. So 45 belongs in this call, uh, this row, one, two, three, four, fifth row. On our fifth row, where there are 19 students who have scored 25. So how did we say that um, the 30th percentile belongs there? Because we have 45 and 46. Okay, the answer is 45. The answer, if the answer is 45, um, and then our rule earlier for step 3, if it's a whole number, L and then L plus 1 observation. So 45 plus 1 is 46. So for you, you need to look for 45 and 46. So 45 and 46 both scored. 25 in the exam so we also make out of this is that we can say that the bottom 30 percent of the scores are less than or equal to 25 so imagine that no um you have 30 percent of your population are below 25 okay while the top 70 percent are above 25 so that's good for any teacher to know, that means that there are only few people who flunked the exam. The rest were able to score higher than 25 or 70% of them scored higher than 25. So, we can now um, understand the use of percentile in interpretations and locations. Now, let's try to do this activity. What I want you to do is um, find the 20th percentile from a set of uh, scores uh, taken by 30 students and then the total number of the exam is 150 items. In order for you to answer this carefully or properly, you would have to build a table the first column would be their scores in the final exam. The second column will be the number of students. And then the third column is less cumulative frequency. You can pause this video for a while and try to answer by yourself. If you're done, 
Then let's go ahead and see the answers. Okay. So here we can see that first we have to organize the data in an ascending order because our given shows um, an ungrouped or unorganized data. So here we have 87 as the lowest and then your highest is 112. And then uh, on the second column, it shows the total number of students who have had that score. Okay, so what we can see is that there were two who got 87 and then we will transfer two to the less cumulative frequency. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, so on and so forth. Now, the 20th percentile is equals to 6 or 90. So how did we know that again? So location is equals to percentile divided by 100 times the total number, which is 30. That gives us an answer of 6. Okay, So, going back, we can say or conclude that 80% is above 90 and 20% is below 90. 20% okay? of the people score, scored below, nine, uh, below 90 while 80% of the students or the population scored above 90. 90. Now for step 3, since we already have the observation which is 6 and then the rule is that L plus 1 or L plus L plus 1. So you will have 6 plus 7. Okay, so 6 is 90 while 7 is 91. Why? Because it the the um the border of the less cumulative frequency is six and then seven already belongs to what one two three four fifth row it already belongs to less cumulative frequency eight that's why the score is 91 okay so we will add 90 plus 91 divided by two which gives us an answer of 90.5 now, since 90.5 is not a whole number, we will take 91 for the percentile. And that's the second rule for step number 3. Now, that wraps up our uh, discussion, the first discussion for Chapter 2, Measures of Location. I hope you have learned something today. Please feel free to follow me on all the platforms suggested here. Ask me questions. You can send me a message through Facebook, LinkedIn, or directly to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. With that said, thank you so much for watching this video and to God be all the glory. Till our next episode.